Hello everyone. We continue our discussion about oligopoly markets. Last time we solved a game, a Kurno game with di discrete strategies, uh, where we had the two firms uh, having only two strategies available. Uh, specifically, these strategies were 48 or 64, right? So both airline companies can either fly a low number or a high number of uh, passengers. So now in this game, we generalize this, we will re uh, relax this uh, constraint and we will let the firm pick any number of passengers. Uh, in that case, uh, we can generalize our example, our previous example, and as we said, uh, as we mentioned earlier, this example is provided by in, Perlo in Perlof's textbook, Microeconomics. Let's uh, read the example first. So we have two firms, American Airlines and United Airlines, with identical cost functions. So these two firms are identical in every respect. They have the same marginal costs of $147, meaning that each passenger costs the company this much. And uh, we have, just for simplicity, assumed that the fixed cost should be zero. Okay, so these firms continue to compete for quantities QA and QU, right, the quantities, so they have to decide on how much to produce based on their rivals' choices uh, in a duopoly market, which means there is uh, no entry or exit. And the total demand curve is given by, uh, by, by this algebraic equation, which means, um, as you know, Q is the total output, so we can rewrite this equation into this uh, form as well. Okay, so we need to compute the Nash equilibrium solution of this game, of this Kurno game. All right, so the simplest way to find the Nash equilibrium again is to look at the best responses. So we need to look at the best responses. So what are the best, we have to ask this question to ourselves. What are the best responses? Well, here is how we can handle it. So we draw our um, uh, market uh, for American Airlines first. So we have the quantity here and the price here as usual. And so for the demand, we need to be careful. We know very well that this is the total market demand, right? So where here this one and this one are 339 given in the example, the way that the example is constructed. But this is not the demand. So this demand curve is given by P is equal to 339 minus Q. This is not the demand that American Airlines actually faces. Okay, So this is the market for American Airlines, but this is not the demand that American Airlines faces. In fact, American Airlines have to consider his opponents, his rivals strategy. So in this simultaneous move game, assuming that the rival will pick uh, to produce QU star, the optimal strategy, what would be the best strategy for American Airlines? Okay, So knowing that the rival has already, uh, well, the rival is un expected to choose QU star, it will shift my demand curve in, so let me actually use a different color for that, okay, so here you go. This is the new demand curve that our company will face, so this effectively is shifted by QU star. So it, it kind of makes sense, so your opponent choosing to produce this much, there is less demand uh, for your product. So it shifts the whole demand curve to the left. Now this is the demand, the residual demand that your company faces now is 339 minus QU star, right? Um, well, let's get rid of this. Okay, so let's get rid of this all together actually. Minus QA. So it kind of makes sense, right? 
So we just what we did is just we just worked on this equation. We shifted it by q u star. So it just affected our constant, but the slope is the same. So we we still have this. Okay, so this is the new residual demand that American Airlines is facing now. And knowing that the marginal cost is the same, so we have the same marginal cost at 147, right? This is the marginal cost of American Airlines. And now it's possible to to, to, to find the optimal decision of, the, of, of both companies. So for this, again, we will need to draw our marginal revenue, right? So this is this is kind of... Um, standard. So this is the marginal revenue of American Airlines. So the marginal revenue um, it has twice the slope of the residual demand curve. Okay, twice the slope. So it's actually possible to write down the equation for the marginal revenue of American Airlines, right? So the marginal revenue will be equal to 339 minus QU star right this one minus twice the slope of the residual demand curve which is minus 2 QA so just as simple as that okay so now knowing this and we already know that the marginal cost is fixed at 147 it's possible to solve for the output decision of the firm so the output decision output decision for American Airlines will be MR A equals MCA. This is kind of the typical um, con uh, condition, right? So now we can solve this for um, QA. The, the for minus 2 QA is equal to 147. So solving for QA, we realize that QA is equal to 96 minus 1 half q u star so it's possible to work on the algebra and get this result and so we will call this the the optimal decision of american airlines and that's why i will add the star to it so given my rival's choice of q u this is how much i will produce if my rival chooses to produce nothing then for me the best is to produce 96 if my rival chooses to produce anything above 192 units my best choice is to produce nothing. So, in a similar fashion, uh, it's possible to find uh, the optimal strategy of uh, United Airlines based on the strategy by American Airlines. In fact, these two are the best responses for American Airlines and United Airlines. So now, finding the Nash equilibrium is fairly simple, as you remember, the Nash equilibrium, Nash equilibrium can be found by uh, simultaneously solving this system. So let's take the first one, QA star is equal to 96 minus 1 half, and we can replace the QU star in the first equation with, the, with this whole right hand side in the second expression, 96 minus 1 half of QA star, right, working the algebra it's possible to find q a star is equal to 64 all right so and it shouldn't be difficult to just plug that in into the second equation and then finding q u star is equal to 64 as well okay so these are the nash equilibrium quantity choices by both firms okay okay now that we know these it's also possible to find the prices, right? So the price depends on is will be determined by uh, the market demand, right? So minus 64 plus 64, which is equal to 211. So this is the price and market price. And finally, the the profit for both firms will be actually the same, right? Because these are identical firms, and it will be given by revenue minus cost. So the revenues are um, 211 is the price, and since we produce 64 units, minus, uh, for total cost, we know that it's going to be given by marginal cost times quantity. So the marginal cost, each one costs 147, each flying one passenger, and then since there are 64 units produced, so from here we realize the answer is 
4096 dollars for both so we are able to to identify the total profit of both companies and that will be it for today and we will continue our discussion in our next lecture thank you